There's been some discussion about the War Powers Act, whether it's constitutional or not. And uh, I tried to discuss this to some extent yesterday, and there was some confusion on some of the blogs suggesting that I support our policy in Libya when I don't. I support killing Muammar Gaddafi for killing Americans over Lockerbie and U.S. soldiers, but I don't have no reason to understand why we're there today, since that apparently isn't the objective. And we don't need to use our battleships and carriers and submarines to get that job done either. Let's talk briefly about the War Powers Act. The War Powers Act is a law where Congress basically sets requirements on the President's Commander-in-Chief powers. Not to make war, but to, to be involved in any military action. And people say, well, they have the power to declare war, and if war is not declared, then a president cannot act. That's not correct. That's never been the case, not since the beginning of the nation. In fact, when they passed this War Powers Act in 1973, they relied on the Necessary and Proper Clause of the Constitution because they said that the Necessary and Proper Clause um, vests constitutional authority in the Congress to determine funding and direction and so forth in war powers. It clearly does not. Necessary and proper clause, in my humble opinion, has nothing to do with that. Now, I went back today and I looked at the what's available on the at the Constitutional Convention in the debate. There were really primarily three proposals on the table. One was that the states would have to authorize war. That was rejected. The other was that Congress, or another, was that Congress would have a much more direct role in war making and overseeing war activity. That was rejected as absolutely impossible because you couldn't have a committee of politicians making those decisions. So they said, look, we have to have a commander in chief. So the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. But Congress still has the ability to fund or not fund. Whatever the objective is of the federal government, it will continue to retain that power. And it also gave Congress the power to declare war. But they didn't really explain what that meant either, because they also argued that the president was the only one in a position as a single individual to know when and how to respond to possible threats to the country. <coughs> so when people are running around saying, you got to declare war, actually, that's not at all clear, particularly in a limited engagement. Now, don't be mad at me, because you... You hate what we're doing in, Lib- in Libya. I hate what we're doing in Libya. But that has nothing to do with this analysis. Every single president of the United States has taken the position that I'm providing you with. Every damn one of them. Including Ronald Reagan. Now that is different than consulting with Congress, which is a wise thing to do in order to ensure that Congress does not cut off funding for whatever operation you're involved in. And also, it seems to me, when you're going to be involved in a major military engagement over a period of time, you should seek a declaration of war. So you have all political arms of the federal government in support of your objective, and you send that message to the rest of the world. So I think that's wise under those circumstances. But I'm not going to change the Constitution or its history or what I read about the Constitutional Convention to accommodate some political expedient. I'm just not going to do it. Congress has the power to defund, the House has the power to impeach, the Senate has the power to convict and remove. All those powers remain. So Congress has enormous power if it believes that the President of the United States is out of line. But they did not want to give to Congress, first the states and then Congress, the the ability to make detailed or tangible or whatever mechanical decisions, operational decisions about war making. But it has a role, and the role is to cut it off, or fund it, or even limit it. So, I know people are, the power to declare war, there it is! But if you're an originalist, you're going to ask yourself, what did the framers say here? What did they say? Because I could trump that with, well, he's the commander-in-chief, so they have the power to declare war, but he's the commander-in-chief. So where does that get us? So I just wanted to be clear about it. And historically, well, last less than 40 years or so, it's been the left, pretty much, and the isolationists who have argued that the War Powers Resolution is constitutional. It's been conservatives who have largely argued that it's not. 
I don't think Congress can pass a statute like this to trump aspects of the constitutional power of the president any more than the president can issue an executive order to trump powers of Congress. See my point? What if the president of the United States issued an executive order today and said, you know what, Congress, you can't fund, uh, excuse me, defund any military action that I take for a year. Well, wouldn't you choke on that? That's preposterous. It's no more than preposterous than Congress passing a law. Excuse me, it's not really even a law, a resolution, which has been uh, honored sometimes and sometimes not by presidents of both parties, saying, well, here's how the commander-in-chief thing works. You get to do this, but after 60 days, you can't, and after 90 days, you can't. That's why Reagan and other presidents said, you don't have the power to do that. You can shut down the operation, but you can't tell me how to be commander-in-chief. You can't give me deadlines. If you can give me 60 days or 90 days, then what? You can give me 12 days for a particular type of action, 14 days for a different type of action. I can use the Navy for 10 days, the Air Force for 27 days, the Army for 48 days. You can't tell me that. And we really don't want Congress doing that, do we? If we have a reckless president, then we ought to have a Congress that's going to defund his actions, or her actions. And I said yesterday, if you believe that what the president is doing should be defunded, then where's the Speaker of the House? Does he, other than issuing press releases and saying, we want to know more, has he taken any steps toward defunding what's going on in Libya? Not one. Harry Reid, not one. So they have power, they've chosen not to exercise it. Obama has power, he's chosen to exercise it in an utterly irresponsible way. Now, what I also said yesterday, and it bears underscoring today, is it is outrageous to me that we have a president who spends more time consulting with the freak show that is the United Nations than with our Congress. And I said he has pseudo-despotic, he has a pseudo-despotic mentality. He just figures he'll do whatever the hell he wants. But it's also interesting to me that on the left, where we have the Kucinichs and say, the Constitution says, and yet when you ask Kucinich and the other leftists, who are anti-war no matter what, Gulf War, Iraq War, Afghanistan, Vietnam, whatever, when you ask them what the constitutional authority is for their whole damn left-wing domestic agenda, they can't tell you. So I don't need lectures from the left about what is or is not constitutional, because they show precious little fidelity to the Constitution. Now, you can disagree with me. Let's see the facts. Show me the evidence. Show me the history. Tell me what the Founding Fathers said. Actually, the Framers. The Constitutional Convention. Tell me where I got it wrong. I'm happy to hear. Like anything else, we're conservatives. If you believe the Constitution is wrong, if you believe the Framers got it wrong, then you amend the Constitution. But let us not be activists in how we interpret it. They checked the President's power through the power of the purse. That's what they did. The United States Congress could defund the Department of War, now the Department of Defense. It can defund certain uh, weapons programs. There's an enormous amount Congress can do if it's serious about objecting to a particular war. The end of the Vietnam War, they did that. They cut off funding for the war. That's what brought that war to an end, an undeclared war. They've cut off the funding. That ended it. No resources available to continue it. Well, like I say, it's not a question of whether you like me or hate me. It's a question of whether the substance, what the substance is of what we're discussing. It's not a left-wing or right-wing thing. It is what it is.